G'day, welcome to Pay It Forward. Well, it's been a bit of a sad week this week with the passing of our beautiful Queen Elizabeth. And certainly for me, I felt that very deeply. I know that a lot of you over there in the UK also um, have, have really suffered a loss there. So, and this week I was very mindful of that and I thought I would create a little pattern that I've been asked to make so often, a beautiful little corgi so I thought I would do it representational of our beautiful Queen Elizabeth with that gorgeous little crown and those beautiful royal robes. Very simple to make, quick and easy pattern and even good for beginners. So I've got a free pattern for you and it's all ready and it's in the description box below. You just need to find that link, download your free pattern templates. You'll be able to print them out on your own home printer. When you do that, it's best to set your printer to be printing at actual size or A4, or perhaps if you're in uh, the US, in letter form. Always chat to me in the comments if you have any problem with printing. Do check the measuring bar that I give you on all of those pages to make sure your pattern pieces are correct. I include all seam allowances in my patterns so you don't have to worry about any of that. So let's get busy making our beautiful little royal corgi. So we, before we start on our beautiful little Pembroke corgi, let's uh, run through our materials and requirements. Now, if you have put together my gorgeous little Scotty, um, they are put together in nearly exactly the same way, just like and the little Westy as well. So very similar, different pattern, but very, very similar. So we'll start with the body. Now I'm working with a deep golden tan felt and I have my side body pieces here. Now you do need to interface your felt with a fusible woven cotton interfacing um, and it needs to be a woven one so that it's nice and flexible. So we've got our two side body pieces in that gold color. Of course, you can make it in a, a tan color if you like. Um, and we also have the back. So on the bottom of this little one, we're keeping the back section fully that tan color because we're going to be adding a little heart detail. But the front section, the center front, we're making in the white. So my white felt also, that one is interfaced as well. Then we need a base piece and that is cut from the white for that contrast. And then we do have that little heart shape that's going to be added to the bottom there. Very classic corgi look and very, very sweet. So, and of course we don't have a tail here. So next we have our head pieces and we have two pieces cut the same front and back with our interfacing applied and they are both in that tan color. And then we have our face details. So we've got our little mask there, which is felt, which is has fusible webbing applied to the back because we're going to be pressing that one on into place there to give us a lovely white flash there. We've got our ear pieces, which are also felt and they have that fusible webbing applied. They're going to go in here and create just that lovely pop of color makes all the difference. You do need a tiny little piece of felt also with that fusible webbing and that is for that gorgeous little nose. We will be adding tiny little black buttons for those eyes that I will show you um, when we get to there. I need to dig those out, just little tiny ones. I'll give you the measurement in your materials and requirements. We will be sewing a little stitched smile, the classic corgi smile. You can do that by hand with a pearl thread or you can do it on the machine. If you're going to be doing it on the machine, we're going to need, of course, a nice black thread um, to do that. I have not yet decided which way I'm going to go about it, but we will uh, decide when we get there. You'll also need some extra pearl thread for sewing the top section of the ears together. So that's basically the dog itself. And then we're going to be going ahead and creating a little dog coat. So I'm making it as royal as I can. So instead of a heart this time on that little coat, I've given you a lovely shield shape. And of course you may have a beautiful little embellishment that will work for this, that will work better, but just giving you the basics here, I'm going to be pressing and stitching those into place. I'm going to add just a little gold button just for 
a little bit more glamour and bling there in the same sort of colors as I'm working with that. Now these two pieces for the coat, I've cut them from felt fabric, what I call felt fabric. It is felt fused to fabric, a normal print fabric using your fusible webbing, your heat and bond. And it gives us a beautiful workable fabric that doesn't fray um, and also it's not too thick. So in this case, we're not showing the fabric side, but you can, you can definitely have the coat, the fabric side on the outside, which I've done here with a little Westy. Um, in this case, I want the royal blue felt. So that's what I'm going with. So I'm going to be sewing a blanket stitch around the entire outside of that completed little coat. And I'm also going to be adding some little pearl beads as I do so. So it's a beaded blanket stitch. You, you don't have to do that. You can just stitch around it. Um, but I do like um, adding those little beads, particularly in this project. To tie everything in together, you will need a button for attaching the head. That one is around about 16 millimeters. Um, size doesn't really matter, just something that works. It can be two hole or four hole. You will also need a snap fastener for the front of that little coat to do that up and a cover button, something pretty, something that will work with the same style. Again, I may be using that little pearl button there to cover that one. Now I've created for this one a beautiful little crown and put together in a really, really simple way. So I've just cut that from glitter craft foam, which is amazing stuff. If you use it for the right things, it can be quite cheap and nasty um, generally in craft, but for if you use it correctly um, and add a bit of detailing, it can be the perfect um, product. So we've got our beautiful little crown. You're also going to need a second piece. We're going to be gluing one onto the other and we're going to incorporate a lovely long pin so that not only will we get a beautiful little bauble at the top there, it means that this pin is how we can drop that into the head. Now obviously if you're making this for a child, you're not going to add um, a pin like that. You can certainly just stitch it on, you could hot glue it on, but I think this is a perfect way to attach that little, that little crown and it sits there very nicely. So you need your two pieces. I'll show you how to go about putting that together when we get to there. So any other embellishments you may wish to use, go right ahead and use them. Um, I will add a couple of beads to the top of that crown as well. You will need your extra strong thread and we will be filling with polyester filling and you'll need your clear craft glue. So we're going to start on the body. So let's get started by taking our two side body pieces and our front center gusset. And we're going to begin by putting these, this front gusset in on each side. So we start with right sides together. This is the top and we're matching up our toes here. I'm working on that center gusset, meaning I'm doing all of my pinning and so on working on this panel, not this panel. So now we're going to match up those curves that run down the front of that leg, pin those through, and we want to match up the marks that we have on both of our pattern pieces. So we've got two marks there, they need to meet. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sew with my extra strong thread, a single strand. I'm just going to overcast mine into place before I stitch it. Now it just means it keeps everything together and when you go to sew it on the machine, nothing slips. When you're making something very small like this, even just one or two stitches out can make all the difference. So I'll overcast that first and then I'm going to sew a four millimeter seam allowance on my machine and from that toe, make sure you back and forth on your start and finish 
and up to the top here, same thing, back and forth. I will then sew straight over that same line of stitching again. So I always sew everything twice for strength because we are going to be packing this quite firm. I do have my uh, a jeans needle in my machine and I have my stitch le length set to a number two so it's nice and small. So once you have sewn in one side, you just repeat with the other side. Now always make sure that you turn those seams through to the right way and roll those out. We do that now while we can before everything gets too congested on both sides and that gives us what will be the front of our little corgi there with those front feet. So now we're gonna flip that one through and we're going to sew the center back seam and we're going to sew that from the top here, from that top point, which is the back of the neck, right down to the base of the tail there. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to overcast it first and then I'm gonna sew a four millimeter seam allowance two times for strength. So now with that back seam sewn, we're going to add the center back gusset. Now, what I've done is opened up some of those tacking stitches, removed them so that I could open that seam nice and flat. I've done that on the top of the neck as well. So now we're going to take a pin and we're going to be putting right sides together, of course. I'm gonna take a pin straight through that center mark at the top at my seam allowance of four millimeters I'm going to go in at the four millimeter seam allowance and come straight through the center of that seam. So now I'm just going to line up those edges until they meet and pin it till they meet right down to the base of the foot. I do like to go side to side so that I'm getting that in nice and straight. Do the same on the opposite side. You'll find that will all line up beautifully. All the way down to the base of the toe. I'm gonna to do that on both sides. I'm gonna get that overcast into place and then I'm gonna show you how we sew a stab back stitch just around that top section. So now we're ready to sew just this top curve section in by hand because we can't tuck this under the machine and sew that in accurately and we do need it to be nice and accurate. So this lower section we can finish off on the machine. So we're going to start coming up from behind. I've got a single strand of my extra strong thread with a knot in the end. I've come up from the underneath at my four millimeter seam allowance. I'm just going to travel the length of one stitch then I'm gonna come back and go straight over the top of that stitch the second time, just so that's nicely anchored in. Now this is called a stab back stitch. I do have a video that shows you up close how to do this one. I will put that link at the top there for you. But simply what we do is we come up from the underneath each time, the length of a stitch, and then we go back into the exit hole from before the previous stitch. We do that so that the stitch is all completely linked back and front. So coming up again, traveling a little way, keep your stitches nice and small and even, back into that last exit hole again. You have such control with this stitch and it is the stitch that we use for any hand sewing and soft sculpture because it's super, super strong especially because we're using that extra strong thread. You find after you've done it for a while, it's really easy to be able to make a beautiful straight line, just as straight as if you were sewing it on the machine. You can see just each time popping back into that last exit hole. I'm going to make my way around to about the same uh, level on the other side. When you get to this center point here, make sure that as we did two stitches at the beginning, you do two stitches either side so that that center seam is really anchored in well. Then I'm going to take it to the machine and just finish the seams off on the machine again and we will sew those two times right down to the base. Again, once you have that all stitched into place, turn everything through so that we can push those seams out again. 
particularly around that bottom section. Really roll those out. And up that back seam there. And that's the little back end of our little corgi. So now turn that one through. And we're going to sew in the base. Now what I have done is remove the tacking stitches from each of those seams on the toes. And that again, it allows me to push those seams nice and flat. Now you should have marked on your base template, which is the front, which of course is here. We're going to put right sides together and we're going to match up that center front mark. I'm going to pop a pin through there. So the way I pin this in is I take my pin through all of the layers, flip it over and just take up a little of the fabric on the other side and push the pin head all the way down. That clamps and holds it in place. Turn it around and we're going to do the same thing with the centre back marks. We're going to match those up. You'll find it's very important to stay with your four millimetre seam allowance throughout this project and to keep it consistent throughout so that everything matches up when you come to add these pieces. So now I'm going to do the same thing as I did with that popping that little back section in in that I'm going to match up those curves now. Pinning in the same way all the way around. So through all of the layers and then taking some up. That clamping that pin head down makes all the difference to making this a much easier task. Lining everything up. You notice again that I'm going from side to side so that I'm pinning it in nice and evenly. I'm going to make my way around the whole base. You'll find it'll all fit in beautifully. I'm going to get it all pinned into place and then I'm going to overcast it just as we have all of the other pieces. So you can see that has my base piece all overcast into place. Now the same as when we were sewing this section in. These sections are a little too difficult to get in under the machine. So we're going to sew the same stab back stitch starting from about here on the top and the bottom curves and then we can connect up that seam um, on the machine just as before. Remember when you're sewing a stab back stitch with your extra strong thread you only have to sew it once. On the machine we always sew our seams twice. Okay, so I've gone ahead and turned that one through once that base piece is all stitched into place. Do make sure that you get in there with a knitting needle and push out all of your seams. And then as we did before, go around and roll them all out. So we've got lovely fluid seams and we have what is basically our little corgi body. So now we just need to fill that up. So. Best to do that with your forceps if you have them. It's the easiest way to fill up that body. And we're going to start at the back and you want to make sure that you really fill out those little back feet and those little front toes. I'm gonna be using my wool felting needle as I go. There's a few areas to pay particular attention to. And that is, as I said, the little toes and make sure you really fill out that bottom. It all needs to be very, very firm. Just to have a look at this little one, my little Scotty, absolutely packed solid. Pushing out all of those curves, those feet are nice and solid. So we get that beautiful shape. We're going to be sewing a blanket stitch to close off that top opening here. So you want to fill right up to the top here and then we'll add a little bit of filling as we go before we close that up. If you use your wool felting needle you'll be able to really pack that filling down in there. You'll find it really handy. So I'm going to get that packed up nice and firm. We'll come back and close that opening. And here is how your little corgi body should look. Now all beautifully filled out. You can see from the top there really filled out at the back those feet front and back and it's very, very firm. Now when you're filling this one, it's important that you keep it flat on the table while you're adding your filling because we don't want this bottom section to blow out. 
You must remember whenever you're filling and stuffing anything in soft sculpture, you've got to be mindful of the fact that you're not just filling a hole, that you're actually sculpting, you're creating a shape. So sculpt as you go, actually with your filling. So now we want to go ahead and close this top opening. You can see that I've really taken the filling right up to the top. I've used my wool felting needle to tuck that all in there and pack it in so it's not jumping out at me. And we're going to just line up that center mark that we've got at the front with that center back seam. I'm gonna throw a clip in there. Now I have my needle with a single strand of pearl thread in a coordinating color and I've got a knot in the end. I'm simply going to start down the base here where that seam starts to open out. We're going to sew a blanket stitch to close this because it's largely not seen and it's the easiest way to close this opening. So that knot will hold. Get yourself into a comfortable position and we're going to take our needle in through both those layers I'm going to bring the needle out through the loop. It's going to bring those edges together. Keep your stitches nice and small and even. Needle out through the loop each time. It's going to create a lovely little binding stitch and it will adequately close that opening and contain all of that stuffing and actually give it a nice decorative little finish. Our final step in putting the body together is on that little cute little bottom there, we're going to add our little white heart patch. So this piece is cut from felt and just with some fusible webbing on the back, not for us to use to heat up, but just to stabilize that felt a little more. So we're just going to temporarily attach that with a little bit of clear craft glue. Just a little smear, we just want to hold it in place. We're going to stitch around that edge with a blanket applique stitch. So just a bit of a smear of clear craft glue there. The positioning of this one we want to show a little V section at the top here. You do want to make sure that it's all lined up with that centre seam. I'm just going to press that one into place. You can throw a couple of pins in it for now. If you use the palm of your hand, it's going to help mould that around. And we want that to dry absolutely completely before we go to stitch it. So I hope you can see that positioning there. So you've just got a little piece at the top there, a little V shape there. I'm going to leave that to dry completely about 20 minutes, we're gonna come back and stitch that one in place. So now that glue is pretty much dry there on that heart and I am going to take my needle. I have a single strand of pearl thread. I'm using white and I'm going to take my needle in and I'm going to come out through the backing fabric on the body, right on the edge of the heart there. I all, When I start a heart, when I'm appliquing a heart, I always start about here. Pull that one through. We're gonna sew a blanket applique stitch. Pull that thread out the way. And I'm gonna take my first stitch in and come out right on the edge, making sure that you're catching the underneath body fabric. And it's just like a blanket stitch in that you come out through the loop. We 
There we go. So next stitch, keep your stitches nice and small and even. Same thing, going to come out. Making sure we're taking up some of that body fabric underneath. And again, bring the needle out through the loop. It's going to give us the little binding stitch, just like a blanket stitch. So again, I have a video that shows you how to sew the blanket applique stitch. And I'll put the link at the top for you to have a look at that one. Just take your time, keep your stitches nice and even. And we're going to work all the way around that little heart shape. If you're finding it tricky to do it on a 3D um, piece like that, you can go ahead and use a curved needle. It can help you tuck in and out. Um, I find just the positioning of this is perfectly fine with a straight needle, but do what works for you. So we're just going to get that one all stitched into place. And there we go, little heart butt there. So if you find that that's a little daunting, the other thing you can do is leave the heart off. When you go to cut that section there, your uh, back centre gusset, you can just cut it in white, the same as this one, and you'll get that nice white flash at the back there. But I just think that little, that little heart is super cute. So now we can put that body aside and we can get started on the head. So the first thing we're going to do with the head, we take one of our head pieces, we're going to remove the backing paper from our front lower mask piece. We're going to line it up with the bottom there. It will line up perfectly and we're going to take it to the ironing board and with a hot iron and a protective cloth, we're going to fuse these pieces into place. We're going to do the ears at the same time. Now the ears, the higher side of the ear is at the top and we just settle that just leave just enough room for you to sew a blanket stitch around. There should be a larger space here. You can see how I've got that done. It just gives it that slightly more realistic little look on that ear there. And same on this side. Make sure that you position them well. Hot iron and a protective cloth get those fused into place. So now I've got those pieces pressed into place there, nicely fused into place. Now what we do need to do is stitch those in place um, around the edges. So this full top edge here and around those ear pieces. I'm going to just take this to my machine and I'm going to sew just with a straight stitch in a white I'm going to sew very close to the edge and that will settle that piece in place. We don't have to worry about this lower edge because that's going to be a seam at the bottom. And I'm going to do the same with the pink and I'm just going to sew right close to the edge. You could hand sew this into place with a blanket applique stitch, a tiny blanket applique stitch. It really is up to you. You could do a very small zigzag stitch on the machine, but I find that a straight stitch works really well like you can see with my little Westie and it does give a lovely professional finish. So there you can see that stitching done around the ears and that top of that mask piece and now I've gone ahead and pressed the nose into place in the same way. You want that nose to be sitting it's around about five to six millimeters from this corner edge here. Don't pop it up here because the corgis do have a longer muzzle and if you pop it up here, they're going to look too snub in the face. So that one's pressed into place. So all I'm going to do here is I've got just a single strand of my extra strong thread in black and I'm just going to pop a couple of stitches straight over the top of this template and that's just to hold it into place. And I'm not looking to cover the whole thing just a couple of stitches will do it. You could sew a tiny blanket applique stitch around the entire edge, but I think I feel like the piece is very, very small. So you're better off just with a couple of vertical stitches covering over the template just to make sure that it doesn't move. And you can see I'm just spacing them 
So it's not like a normal stitch nose. So I'll just do a couple more and that will hold that in place. Now that I have that nose stitched into place, I'm just going to go ahead and stitch in a mouth line. So what I've done is I've just taken my ruler and lined up the center there and it's around about five millimeters that I've drawn a straight line down. And then I've taken, I actually have a little eclipse um, stencil here that makes it really handy. And I've drawn in my two little mouth curves and then I've just pulled it out either side there. So we get that real little wolfy sort of little grin there. Now you can stitch over this with a normal um, stem stitch, a uh, satin stitch by hand, or you can sew it on the machine. I'm actually going to sew it just in black on my machine. I'm going to sew over it two times so that it's nice and clear. And this is a heat erasable marker. So once I've done that, I can press it and my lines will be all gone. There we have cutest little corgi smile there. So now we're going to put our right sides together of our front and back pieces. We're going to add the eyes when the head is all put together. So you want to line everything up and we're going to, I'm going to use a couple of clips here just to clip those ears in place. And we're going to sew first with my overcasting stitch from the base of the ear right the way around to the base of the other ear. It's four millimeters again and we do so that two times. You do really want to make sure you're back and forth on your start and finish because we're going to be turning it through there. You want to turn that one through and really push that seam out, really roll them out. It should have a nice curved little bottom to the face. So now we're going to add some filling. Now when we're doing this, what we don't want is to create a big ball of a head. We want to keep it all quite nice and flat. So I tend to fill out the edges. So I've got my forceps and I'm pushing all of that filling into all of the edges there. And I'm going to continue to do that as I go. Notice I'm keeping my hand on top there and that's going to stop it from bulging out and creating a shape that we don't want. Pack it all in there because the idea is that we get a little face that's got some shape to it. It's got some filling in it, but you can see it's still quite flat there like this one. So continue on. Your best friend here is your wool felting needle because it's a big opening here and that stuffing tends to want to come back out, out, back out at you. So if you take your felting needle, you can really pack it down in there. We do want it to be quite firm. Those little heads are still quite firm, um, but uh, quite flat. So we're going to fill right up to the top here. The ears we're going to glue together. So it's just this portion, the lower portion of the head that we're filling. And we do need it to be quite firm also because when we add those eyes, we want to be able to have a nice amount of pull in there. So I have that head filled now. You can see just how firm that is through here. What we want to be able to do is glue those two ear pieces together and the top of the head is going to be stitched across. So you need enough room left to be able to do that. And I have taken my felting needle and popped it in there and really created that shape. And I've just left no stuffing in that ear section there. So this is where your felting needle is really handy to tuck all of that in. So now I'm going to take my clear craft glue and I'm just going to liberally glue the back of that ear. The whole shape of the ear because we want it to glue together right the way down to the base. Just pop those two together. You can definitely use your clips here. They're going to come in super handy to hold all that together, particularly on the corners here, those front corners and that lower edge. Then we're just going to repeat with the other side, pull that down again, 
Get in there with your felting needle, packs everything in. And add that glue again. Making sure I go across the base of that ear to stop that filling going up into the ear. So we get that nice flat effect. Line that all up again. Adding my clips. Squeezing that all together. And we're gonna let that sit and dry till that's completely dry. So at least 20 minutes or so before we come back and we're gonna close the whole top of that head. The glue on those ears is nice and dry now. We're gonna go ahead and sew a blanket stitch around that entire top edge. So because this top section's still open, I've got a single strand of pearl thread. I'm using an eight ply here, just with a knot in the end. And now we're going to go in here. I want to come out at the base of that ear where that seam starts to open out right there between the two layers will be my start point. Pull that one through, use your forceps if that's a struggle. Pull that through, that little knot will hold. And now we're just going to go through all the layers and bring our needle out through the loop. It's just your standard blanket stitch. Keep your stitches nice and small and even. You'll find you've left just enough room around that ear to be able to make this stitch. And actually that little ear insert gives you a bit of a guideline for your stitches. And that's going to just close those raw edges and give it a nice hand stitched finish. You can see just going through all the layers and bringing your needle out through the loop each time. It's the same stitch that we used on the neck edge of our body there. See, we're getting a nice little bound result there. We're gonna go all the way around. When you get to the top of the head here, just pull it out nice and flat. You'll be able to go across the top of the head, finish off down the base of the other ear. Now our final step is to add our eyes. I've marked in the eye position there. They really do just sit right in that curve there. Make sure that they're not too close. You know, you want there to be some of that color around the eye. I'm using a six millimeter button and we're going to be able to pull those in. So you can see once it's pulled in, we're still gonna have color around there. So I'm using my extra strong thread and I've got a single strand with a big old knot at the base. I'm gonna come in at the back of the head. This will be hidden with the, when we join the head to the body. So I'm gonna come out just one side of that mark there. I'm using my medium doll needle, I just find it easier. And we're just going to go through that button from behind, just making sure I'm going the right way. Taking that through, back through the other hole. And then we're gonna go back in right on that mark and come out again at the back. Make sure those threads aren't twisted and you can see we're gonna get some good pull in there. So I will go through that, those two holes a couple more times, making sure to really anchor that in and keep that tension up so that that stays pulled in. I'll then just make a little knot on the back, travel across and do the same with the other side. But you do want those eyes pulled in. If they're just sitting on the surface, you just don't get that same expression. 
And there we go, that gives us our sweetest little corgi face there. You can see the difference it makes when you really pull those eyes in. So now we're going to attach the body, the head to the body. Very, very simple process. So basically what I'm going to do, I am going to take a doubled strand of extra strong thread, which I've got on my medium sized doll needle. A button is positioned at the back here right in the center. We're only using two of those holes. We're going to start by going in one of those holes through the button. We're going to travel through. Make sure you're taking your needle through straight. Don't go up at an angle. It will change the angle of your head. So we're going to take our needle straight through. Then we're going to dive into the back of the head. Now I've put a little mark there. It's just below center. So where you did your eye stitching, it's just below that. We will take our needle across, a nice big stitch straight across, and then we're going to travel back the same path. So back into the body, and you'll come back out through the hip, this side, and back through the hole on the other side. Now I'm gonna get it all linked up because it's much easier to get it halfway there and then I'll show you exactly how that will look. So I've got that all done in place for you to see. I've got my both of my thread ends are hanging there so you can see exactly that pathway. So with my needle I've gone in through that side of the button in one hole straight through taken a nice big stitch into the head, come back in exactly the same pathway coming through the other side. So now we've got that on like a nice little hinge there. You really want to pull that in and have a look from the front and check that the head position is good. So there should be a nice little upward tilt to the head. You can have a look there and see how far mine is from the top. But if it's wrong, if you put it on and it seems to be too far down or too far up, then simply pull it out and start again. It's very easy to readjust. But I'm pretty happy with that. And I'm going to now pull on those threads and knot that off at least four times, nice and tight. Really keep that tension up. Then you can just re-thread your thread ends and take them in and out of the body there. And that has our beautiful little corgi's head in place. A lovely little head position there. So now we can pop this one aside. We're gonna start making her little coat. So what you first need to do is, and I'm not running through the actual application of these because you may be using, I'm thinking people are gonna be using something that is um, relative to them. Um, you may have all sorts of little embellishments that you can use that will give it that lovely royal flavour. I've given you a little shield template, which of course you can press on like I've done there. I've just stitched around with my blanket applique stitch. You could do that on the machine too. And you could add any sorts of little embellishments. Try and think of old jewellery and that sort of thing. It tends to be really useful for this sort of thing. Um, alternatively, you may want to put just a lovely flower or a rose or something like that. So I am going to be adding those, just those gold buttons, just for a bit of colour once I've put this all together. So for now, once you've added all of your um, embellishments, we're going to put right sides together and we're just going to stitch that four millimetre centre top seam from here across to here and make sure you're back and forth on your start and finish. Then we're gonna get that seam pressed out nice and open and flat. Okay, so you can see there my little coat now put together and I've pressed that seam nice and open and flat so it's going to sit nicely over the back. Now this outside edge all the way around, you can sew with a blanket stitch. You can do just a plain blanket stitch. You could take the coat to your machine and so a close zigzag satin stitch all the way around if you're wanting to make these a little quicker. Um, lots of options here. I'm actually going to, I want to add a little more bling to this one. So I've got my little pearl beads here and I'm going to sew a beaded blanket stitch, which I have a video for. 
I'm going to put the link at the top there so you can check that out. That video shows you very clearly how to incorporate a bead with every stitch. It is a little time consuming, but because I'm going to be adding that little pearl button at the front there, it's going to bring it in all really nicely. So I'm gonna get, I'm gonna start at the back here. I always start at the back and I'm going to make that stitch all the way around until I get back to here. And there we go, all of that beaded blanket stitch done. And you can see it does give it just a lovely, neat and tidy result there. You could of course add a little tiny trim around there. And I did think, wouldn't it be lovely to do the UK flag on either side? But I'm sure you're all gonna have amazing ideas as you always do. So what I've then gone and done is added my final little details with the buttons and I've added a cover button there and I've got my little snap fastener there at the front. So that's all ready to go on our beautiful little dog. Now let's move on and make that tiny crown and it's very, very simple. So what we start off with is a little cut template that you cut from your glitter foam. It's very easy to cut, but just a little tip for when you're cutting out in this sort of foam. When you're cutting, you want to cut right up in the apex of the scissors and continue that cut going around. If I can explain that perhaps a little better. What you don't want to do is cut out your shape with little snips like this. Little snips are going to give you jagged ed edges. What you do want to do is this. You'll get a beautiful clean line. So just a little cutting tip there. So once we have this uh, template cut out and it's all lovely and ready, you'll need for my, what I'm doing is I'm adding a nice long pin and I'm utilizing the top of the pin head uh, to be a little bauble at the top of my crown. Of course, you can just stitch this little crown into place if you want to. Mine is just a display. So she's just gonna sit on display with my other animals. So it can be uh, just popped into the top of her head with that little bit of a pin. A longer pin is best because it gives you more uh, left over to actually pin it into the dog's head. So what I like to do is I first take my clear craft glue and just glue along the top straight edge there of another piece of foam on the wrong side. Just glue that into place, just the top section here, leave this section unglued. Once that's glued into place, then you liberally coat the back of this piece with your clear craft glue and you want to line it up and glue it into place just like this so that the point is touching the tip and that this pin is going straight down the center. I hope that makes sense. You really want to push all of those edges down and stay with it while it's drying so that you keep compressing it. What you're going to end up with is this. So I hope that shows you better. You can see that pin is right down the center, the point is right at the top and it's really well secured. Your excess glue that flows out, don't worry about that because now we just simply go ahead and we trim off the excess there. And as I said before, when you're cutting out, you're going to go right up in the apex of the scissors and you're just going to continue around that curve for, a best, for your best results. Just pull that round. The foam is very, very pliable. and you'll get a lovely clean cut. Obviously at the top here, we're just gonna snip that straight off. Do exactly the same with the other side and across the base. So there's my little crown and I've got that little pin extending there. So you can see the longer the pin, the better. So I've then gone ahead and added two extra pins either side and just slipped them through that foam. And then I've just snipped them off at the base. You can just hot glue some extra beads or any sort of little, um, you know, extra accessories you've got. Um, and I do like to curve that little crown a little and you find it's quite moldable. 
So my last uh, step will be I'm going to add a little old lost earring that I only have one of and I'm going to put a little hole through here with my awl and then I'm going to be just be able to pop that through and do that up with the back of it and I will have a lovely little finish there at the centre of the crown. Again, you could just hot glue a little jewel there, whatever you like. So I'm going to get that one finished and we're going to get our little corgi all dressed up. And there she is, all complete, beautiful little representation of our little queen's corgi. And of course, we've got that lovely poseable head. So we've got some really uh, lovely expressive poses there. That gorgeous little coat. I can't wait to see what you all do with that coat. Um, the little heart on the bottom, just such a sweet little project. Um, I would love to see these just crazy embellished. And you can see that little crown just sits beautifully there at the top of the head. Alternatively, just a couple of stitches will hold it into place and you'll be all set. So if you've enjoyed making this one, of course, we have the beautiful Scottish Terrier. We have the little Westie and we have a Yorkie. So what a beautiful group. I need to add to these. I need to keep on adding to these. Tell me in the comments the little breeds that you would like to see. But what a gorgeous little bunch. I love making them. They're a quick make and they're fun and they don't use much fabric. So thank you all for joining me for this one. I hope you've enjoyed it. And I hope it's a lovely nod to our beautiful queen. Well, thank you for joining me today. And I'm looking forward to seeing some lovely regal little pups coming up especially on our Facebook page. So if you haven't joined our Facebook page, come along and do so. I'll put that link down below there for you. You can share anything that you've made using my patterns, whether it be Masterclass or just here on Pay It Forward. And we do love to see your work. It certainly inspires me and keeps me going. If you would like to see some other little breeds in this style, talk to me in the comments and tell me what you'd like to see. I love to hear your ideas as much as I love seeing your work. If you do want to catch up with me privately or really capture my attention, best way is through Instagram. So you can see that address there across your screen. That's how to find me and chat to me on Instagram. And, uh, and you can ask me anything at all. I talk to a whole lot of people that way. Um, I do try and drop in on our Facebook page as much as I can, but to really capture my attention, Instagram's the best way to go. So thank you all so much for all of your support and for sharing your beautiful work with me. I've seen some amazing pieces come up and certainly excited to hear that some of you have been entering competitions and of course, absolutely coming out on top. Congratulations to all of you who have been doing that. So keep on putting your work out there share the good news of pay it forward and um, have a fantastic creative week everybody keep on paying all those good things forward and until next time it is huru from me